Hey, what's going on everyone? It's David Palmer, Leo King, and welcome to Deep Astrology, your weekly astrology forecast for the week of February 4th through the 10th of 2020. Thank you so much for being a part of HighVibe.tv, of course, to watch this show full in its exclusive format. And right now, if you are not a member of HighVibe.tv and you're watching this on YouTube, make sure that you check out our awesome sale going on right now, 20% off, this is the last day. So, you wanna get on High Vibe, not only where you get the monthly horoscope that I do, which is right, uh, it's like right, it's like right, right here, you know? It, this is an intense horoscope about February. It's also individually for sale, so if you don't wanna be a member and you just wanna buy one off, you can do that too and use the discount code, but just to let you know, that video is part of the subscription now and all my dailies, all my weeklies, full disclosure, all the other awesome content on HighVibe.tv, you're not gonna wanna miss it, and of course, Deep Astrology in its full form. Thanks so much for being a member. Well, full moon in Leo week. <laughs> the Leo King is ready for a full moon in Leo. I think we all are ready for a full moon in damn Leo. To remember that there's love, there's happiness, that there's life, that there's our unique, beautiful self. Because a full moon in Leo means it's a sun in Aquarius. And we are still in Aquarian times. We're not out of the Aquarian energy. This is a time where we are trying to understand where the future is going, but we're gonna need that lifeline energy of Leo to connect because both Aquarius and Leo bring the light. They bring the lifeline to life, the connection, the electricity, the fire. And this is an intense time for us of building up into February with this full moon. It is gonna be our best launching pad that we have here because we have quite a weird energy that is going through this week. One, of course, Mercury's now in Pisces, getting ready for its retrograde. Now, Mer Mercury's gonna be in Pisces for a while here, like it was last year. And Mercury, of course, is at its fall position in Pisces where it becomes confusing. Things start to, you know, it's good for imagination, it's good for doing weird projects of art or having some visualization stuff, but when it comes down to the brass tacks and the facts and stuff, it, it com becomes difficult. Even communication-wise, it's like really trying to dig into sensitive areas. And yes, it's made some great sextile over to Uranus here on Tuesday. So, you know, it's almost like we're getting like, okay, we, we can see how we can fix this or fix that or make our life more stable. But I just want to say that the most stable sign in the zodiac is Taurus. It is the fixed earth sign. And Uranus is here. So the earth, our lives, our monetary system, everything is the most unstable place ever. And the way that you go through that is through this Pisces alignment that helps us remember that through unstable energy of the most stable energy that you could ever live in, which is no longer, at least until Uranus goes into Gemini, which, <laughs> that seems to not be too stable either, but, and that's in about six more years. But you know, this is a time where going with the flow of letting spirit guide these things. And this is a true surrender to spirit and to the heart space What's also really interesting too is Jupiter is at 15 degrees this week. Now, in ancient astrology, the exact degree in tropical astrology of the most falled position, the reason why Jupiter is at fall, is at 15 Capricorn. So this is a very hard place for Jupiter, and Jupiter's dealing with the south node in the same sign, and Jupiter's in of course, Capricorn, so it's in Saturn's house, and Saturn is still in Capricorn, and Pluto is here. So we are not in times that feel like the opposite, Jupiter and Cancer, where you feel buoyant of beneficial energy. It feels like you're having to really pull one when, you know, out of nowhere of your life, positivity-wise, hope-wise, when you're at the bottom of the barrel. Hey, the bottom of the barrel is not always the worst thing in the world. But, you know, I, I will say that this is going to be why this week is happening is to learn that it really does not get worse. Because I think that one of those things that really I think Jupiter teaches is there's always an open door. And to me... I feel that this is an opportunity for us to see us where we believe is the worst. We can also take that belief of the worst to the worst places with Neptune and sextile, even though that's a positive alignment. 
I don't care what aspect's happening to Neptune, there's always going to be a delusional element or taking it too far or even taking it down into some sort of really high sensitive place. But in the background of all these crazy transits happening right now, it really is about knowing that the true way to get through this reality at this moment is by learning how to ice skate better. Yes, it's Aquarian time, so we want to try to understand the future and figure things out and become our own scientists, become our own lab rats in the year of the rat, <laughs> you know, and try and figure it all out. But this full moon in Leo is like, okay, everybody shut up for one minute. Who's having fun? Who's having love? Who's having a good time? We got to laugh still. We got to have a good time. Like, let's get out of the laboratory for a minute. Let's, for one second, if we don't understand everything, who cares? Like, let's try and find a way to have some sort of laugh and fun. And with Venus this week, leaving its exaltation of Pisces where it loves to be because it's easy going. So when it comes to relationships right now, what a weird week. The finishing of Venus in Pisces at the tail end, it's made some nice sextiles over to Saturn Pluto, which I think just pretty much cleared a lot of the energy out of like relationships, project energy, and just had to clear a lot of the air, clear a lot of the energy of where things are going and come up with a plan. But it's still, again, more Pisces of go with the flow, even though Saturn and Pluto and Jupiter and South Node and Capricorn want control and they want to understand timing and they want to get it all done. But it's like, oh, we're in Aquarius and Pisces energies, right? That's much more flowy and wherever the universe is and trying to still figure it out. And there's a lot of calculation and there's a lot of calculation where, you know, it's kind of like being on a, nobody even uses them anymore, but like on an old calculator where you're just like, da -da -da -da. oh man, I just did all the numbers and then I pushed, you know, time zero accidentally. But I got to start all over. This is where if we get too much into this scientific, calculative, figuring things out in the mind that we're going to lose ourselves. So when Venus comes into Aries during this full moon, especially, it's going to be with Chiron. Now, Venus in Aries is at its detriment. So it's not the happiest there, but you know, it's in Mars's house, right? So Mars is all about go, go, go. Let's get it. Let's have it now. And there's Venus like, okay, like getting, she's getting pushed into things, right? Whether it's relationships or projects, it's like, let's go, let's make it happen now. So there's going to be that little umph. Mars is still in Sagittarius, so we're going to get some fire this week. And we better use this fire. Because really soon here, Mars is not going to be in Sag anymore. And Mars is going to go into Capricorn with the South Node. And, you know, I did it in my monthly, but one of the transits, and I'll just say it to everybody, and I said this on January 30th live, if you're on high vibe, we all did it together. I was like, well, when was the last time that Mars and Capricorn went in to Capricorn while the South Node was in Capricorn? I'm like, well, we'd have to go to the last time that the South Node was in Capricorn. So I'm like, okay, 2001, 2000. I'm like, oh, 2001. And then I was like, oh yeah, Mars retrograded in Sag at 29 degrees. And then I'm like, okay, so we're gonna have to keep going. And then you get to September of 2001. And then you get to September 7th and 8th of 2001. And then you get to literally 9-11 when Mars goes to one degree of Capricorn. And we have the moon and Jupiter in the North Node and Cancer. Now it's all coming to a flip when Mars comes in the following week. When we're going to have the moon, Jupiter, and the South Node and Mars all in Capricorn. So there's this weird kind of flippy weird vibe from September 11th of 2001. I'm just going to put that all out there for people. So, ugh, this Venus in detriment is reminding us to use all the fire, even though, sure, it might not sometimes work out. One thing about Venus in Aries is I always call it the big blow up doll in the zodiac, right? You blow it up real big and or it's like a big balloon. You're like, yeah, it's boom, it's awesome. And then it can lose its air quick. You know, so relationships can be really hot, fast, and heavy that come really quick and then kind of out. But with Chiron there, there's a lot of healing that needs to take place, especially when it comes to our egos are wounded really bad. The way that we see the world, the way that we identify with life, the way that we identify with the courage to keep moving forward during a Jupiter at its most fall position. Venus now in detriment. I mean, Mercury in fall. I mean, there's not a lot of energy. The sun's at its detriment in Aquarius. This full moon is actually quite the energy to remind us that, hey, 
I know everybody's not where they want to be. Because literally, you got to look at it like this in your life, okay? The planets are not where they want to be, except for Saturn. <laughs> okay? So, Saturn isn't the most fun energy out of all of them. It's the most boring, and sure, it'll get shit done, and it's got, you know, the ability to make plans and all this kind of stuff, and grow, and be more elderly, and get old, and play by these moral codes, and oh my gosh. So we need a little bit of party at the retirement community, you know what I mean? And that's what this full moon is reminding us. Mars also as well is going to be at the galactic center this week during this full moon energy. So follow your galactic understanding of where the adventure is taking you, this Venus, in Aries is going to be with Chiron. So it might be like, okay, okay, I'll just be very blunt for me when I'm not feeling well. I like to get a vanilla milkshake. I know it sounds so stupid, but you know what? When I'm not doing good, I get one of those and I just feel better. And I don't drink milk and I don't really, but there's something about a milkshake. I don't know. So it's like, you know, there's these things that Venus and Chiron together is like licking your chops in ways that make you feel better. Sometimes that's weird relationship situations too. I got no judgments out there. Venus, Venus and Chiron and Aries, you know, it's like jumping into things to feel better. But you know, it is one of those things with love and happiness that we just gotta find a way to make ourselves happy. And, I, and you know what? The reason why Venus is that detriment is because it doesn't judge itself so much. It doesn't judge other people in Aries. It just does what it wants. But of course, Venus can get unbalanced in that way where it's like, oh, I jumped into that. That was definitely the wrong situation. I didn't really think about how it affects my life or how it affects my money or how it affects my reputation or how it affects any of that stuff. But at the same time, there, there's something to say about the universe is trying to say like, we all need some sort of positive happiness. We need something because we all feel drained. We all feel like there is not a lot, especially with that Rahu North Node and Cancer and just so much energy with K2 and Capricorn. It's like we are just in a desert of emptiness. And I feel that it's so important for us to realize that this full moon with Mars and Sag, with Venus also in Aries, is a moment for us to realize that we do have to bring that fire back into our lives of belief, positive belief. Because Mars is getting ready and Mars is not happy, even though Mars loves Capricorn. So Mars is really excited to come into Capricorn. The only bummer with that is the south nodes there. So Mars doesn't like the south node at all because it makes Mars feel like a, a, a loser. It makes Mars feel like we're about to head into a losing situation or a losing hand. It's almost kind of like you feel something that might be written on the wall coming up here that you feel like, I'm going to have to really deal with something that might not go the way that I want to in life. And of course, you can put that out in the world perspective. You can put that out in your own, your own world's perspective as far as your own inner world. But even if you think of like the notion of what I was saying earlier with Uranus and Taurus, like, welcome to an unstable world. It was very unstable in the 30s when it came in in 33 and 34, like especially there in 34. Really unstable. And so here's Saturn and Pluto obsessive over trying to keep control. I gotta keep control. I gotta have control of my life. I gotta know every play. Before you go in there, I wanna know everything you're gonna say. You know, it's like that kind of energy, right? It's micromanaging. We're all micromanaging our own selves away from love, beauty, happiness, joy, adventures. And rem rem remembering that we have to fill our emotional happiness up, our, our true happy cups up, that we can have fun still in life, that maybe we need to not be so caught up in a crazy moral code when, if I were to say this in kind of a weird cryptic way, what if we all do not make it from a coronavirus? Who knows? I mean, at this point, though, I think everybody's over it and just willing to accept it. But I'm just saying that when you start to look at the world and you start to think about things, it's like, what are you doing? What am I doing? That's more like it. Like, what am I doing? Like, why am I in this place in my life? Well, all the planets are saying the same shit. <laughs> They're all saying the same shit. Like, what the fuck am I here for? When you get that many planets there, all that's left is 
the reminder of this full moon in Leo that there is love, that there is hope, that there is positivity in the world, that there's the love of yourself. What makes you happy? Thank God I had parents that would just be like, what makes you happy? You want a Kit Kat or you want a Reese's? I was like, fuck, I, like, I want both. I was lucky. I was lucky. I'm a Leo. So my whole life. And no, I don't like that. I like this, though. It wasn't so much about what I never liked as a child. It was more about what I liked. I focused on what I liked. So if somebody told me, like, you should go out with so-and-so, I'd be like, no, I like her, though. It was pretty clear about who I liked. Not the I wasn't so focused on what I didn't like. Leo doesn't focus on what it doesn't like. Leo focuses on what it loves. And so this is a point where in your life you have an opportunity with Mars at the Galactic Center. We've already had Jupiter and Venus here. Now here's Mars here to activate it. Mars is getting ready to come towards that south node in the next week with Mercury retrograde, by the way, on the 16th. So you don't have much time. We got about a week and a half here. And this full moon this weekend is a full moon in Leo to remind you to, gosh, for, for one moment in your life, Put your true happiness first and don't judge yourself and don't judge others about what makes them happy and stop doing things that don't make you happy anymore. And you don't even have to make it a thing like, I'm not gonna do what doesn't make me happy anymore. It's more like, I'm gonna do what I fucking love. Because the Aquarian energy is a rebel. The Aquarian energy does wanna move into the future. And it needs some Leo right now to remind itself because Leo comes before Aquarius. It needs the joy, the, the understanding, and the focus of the exactly what is happy to connect to. Or else we're just in a web of energy, a web of people, a web of situations, just a web, a web, a web, and then we might feel like a spider. Waiting for something to just come and I guess we'll just eat that because it just floated in our web. That's not the life that we're here to live. Sure, it's unstable times. So if you're trying so hard for stability, you better start to know that this is about flexibility. Why do you think yoga's so hot? We have to be flexible. The planets are forcing us to be flexible. Our souls are not meant to be so controlled and so stuck in one place. And this is the opportunity for you to make your life colorful, lovely. I think Mercury and Pisces is beautiful because you know what? It stops looking at how, stops looking at why, and just starts looking at, I don't know, it feels like this is pretty synchronistic, doesn't it? Feels like God's here, doesn't it? I'm gonna throw this to God. You know, it's that one minute, right, when you think, I'm not going to be able to, I don't know, pay my rent. And then you just find out that there was some sort of weird situation that you forgot about, or a check comes in the mail out of nowhere, you know? It's just like, what? And there you were stressing and not happy and in control, 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 and stress that's no more, it's not even doing anything good anymore. And so we finish this week as we finish this full moon in Leo. And yes, the moon does come into Virgo and there's a lot of Pisces going on. There's Mercury and Pisces, right? So we're going to come into this intense reality where things don't make sense. And so next week we're going to start off kind of rocky. And I'm just preparing people for that because this is this week to get in alignment. The moon's also going to be in Cancer this week, by the way, too. It's in Gemini now making a nice trine to the sun, but it is squaring all the Neptune stuff. So you've got to Look at the logical aspects. You've got to look at the things that make sense in your life, but you have to, more importantly, get in touch with your emotional world. You need to definitely get much more in touch with what makes you happy because the reality that's coming is going to be weird and very hard to understand. And at the end of the day, it's better to be happy going into a world that we don't understand that's truly unstable. And I'm sorry to tell everybody, it's not going to get any more stable, especially with Neptune's uh, semi-square Uranus still. There's just no way. So, why don't you have some fun? Why don't you live your life? Why don't you take maybe using this Capricorn energy for the risk to feel? Let's look at the charts.
the risk to feel. I like that. Ah. So, I like that, the risk to feel. It's just a time where we don't want to to do this anymore. And I think that the number one thing, and I'm going to, I'm going to give away to those on YouTube, like, I'm not going to show a chart, but I'm going to show you just an amazing segment about this Jupiter at 15 degrees of Capricorn. Just because I think it's so important for people to note that going back in ancient astrology and going back into the old books and to the old astrologers that go back thousands of years really helps us when it comes to our journey, when it comes to understanding our journey, when it comes to, you know, really how to, why? Why are we at this weird moment? Because you know what? As doing astrology for over a decade and doing so many horoscopes, I mean, I literally yesterday, I, I filmed over 40 horoscopes. Yeah, 12 of them got messed up from sound, Mercury and Pisces. But I have to refilm them. So, when, when, you know, for me, that's like a normal thing. For some other person, that might be crazy. But I mean, I've literally done over 10,000 video horoscopes. So, for me, I, I do it so much, I do it so long, I don't look at the simple shit. Like, okay, Mars is here, and it's sextile over to that, and this is a full moon. Yeah, of course, that's all included. And that's an important aspect. But I think that the most important aspect you got to look at are there are so many aspects of understanding the dignities and also the degrees of, the, of why. Whether you're, you're going to use the, 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 the deacons or whether you're going to use... Uh, there's a million other aspects that you can use in astrology. But I think that it's so important for people to use some of the ancient stuff because some of that ancient stuff is... Like, for example, like, like Marcus Manilius. Like... He was a poet astrologer. So if you read Astronomica, and I'm not actually talking about that, what I'm going to show you all, but if you read Astronomica, which I've had that book now since, I don't know, and it was, I got to give props, it was Santos Bonacci who told me to read that book. You know, it's like you start to realize that astrology truly is a much more poetic, spiritual story that is truly connected to mankind that is truly connected to God and source, that is truly helping us understand the world that we live in. But it's these old ancient ways that actually are not really shown to people in today's modern astronomy, astrology community. I would say more in the pop culture one. If you go to a conference, you'll hear it. You could go talk to a lot of great people out there that would know this. But like, for example, though, like, uh, and, and, and this is honestly a book that I think that everybody should really get, but, you know, especially because it's amazing. So if you look at this, I love Julius Maternus because his work, which is Mathis, I can't even say his name. Every time I try to say his Libri, the eighth, his eight books of the Mathesis, okay? or the theory of astrology, stands as the final as well as the complete work on astrology of the classical world. Long story short, he also was during the whole Christian time and the switch during Constantine and so forth. But if you look at some of his old teachings, I'm just showing this from his book here. When you get into which degree is going to create the fall or the exalted positions, and actually what I'll do is I'll erase this really quick just so you can make it easier to see here and then we'll highlight it. So, like, Saturn is exalted at the 21st degree of Libra, while it is in fall in the 21st degree of Aries, as we can see right here. So, we're going to have some fun. But when it comes to Jupe, Uncle Jupe, Jupiter is exalted at the 15th degree of Cancer. But it is in its fall, the worst place for Jupiter to be, at the 15th degree of Capricorn. Mars is exalted at the 28th degree of Capricorn. You know what's ironic is... The last Mars retrograde, okay, that happened in 2018 in the summer, that was with, there was a lunar eclipse that was July 27th, that was still in Aquarius. And so in August of 2018, oh, here we are. 
we had Mars at that degree where it went retrograde stationary and then stationary direct, okay? So Mars was happy at that degree, but for a moment, and then it went back with the south node. So that's where Mars likes to be. It loves to be in Capricorn. It's exalted there, but at the 28th degree. Ironically enough, when Mars goes to meet up, with Saturn, and when it does go to meet up with Pluto, it's coming into those heavy degree zones of where it likes to be, and so Mars is going to be extremely strong there, okay, especially with Saturn, big time. Remember that Mars is going to be in Capricorn. Saturn does not come into Aquarius till March 22nd. Anyway, I just wanted to remind people, and I just wanted to show you, we're about to go in the charts now, so if you're a member of High Vibe, of course, you go into it with me the charts. If you're on YouTube, stay here because I keep the audio going. So at least you'll have the audio. I don't leave you out high and dry. But it's a lot more fun going through it all the way that we do it. So please join highvibe.tv today. We got an awesome discount code. It's just deep love, one word, lowercase. And you get 20% off a membership or my paid video, which is my February 2020 video, which is standing focused through chaotic distractions. And I also have like a sub text to that, which would be the new normal. <laughs> and that's what I show people is like, welcome to the new normal. So it's, it's, a very, it's an hour and 42 minute video done like this, deep astrology style. And I go through many charts and I go through history and I go through looking at different placements and it's all part of the subscription. And we have a one month every month. So if you just want to do monthly or we have a three month, which is $24 and add 20% off of that, do the math. And then we have a six month, which is $45.99 with 20% off. Now you do the math on that, what that equals to for six months. So that's how it keeps the lights on here and keeps this show going and keeps all the other shows going that you see here on YouTube. And Craig and I have an amazing new show coming out. We're not even going to talk about it. We're just going to blast you with it. It's a daily show. So we literally have been spending hours building it. So, and there's a lot of cool aspects we're adding into it all. Uh, and that will not, that will be of course on high vibe, but it will be on YouTube, but it will not be, we'll just say, wait till you see. Anyway, thanks for joining high vibe. Let's go to the charts right now. So as if we take a look at where we're at here, February 4th on Tuesday, it's quite interesting. It is a weird moment. The sun made its great aspect to the moon today, but that moon was in a lot of weird waters in Gemini. It was squaring over to Venus. It's squaring over to Neptune. So a lot of questions emotionally about, you know, what is going on in the spiritual world? Any insecurities coming up, trying to figure out how to get out of them. But then the moon square Venus too, that brings up a lot of weird relationship stuff and projects and where is it going and, and, and uncomforts. Might be uncomfortable situations of what to say, expressing your emotions in a certain way. But it's like, just let it pass is what Venus is saying. Just like, it doesn't matter. You're a moon in Gemini. Like, I'm exalted here. Like, just let it be. It's stupid shit. It's not nothing to worry about. So move on. And I think that that's how we have to come through this week, is move through. We've all, we're all going through crazy shit. I mean, I just literally got off watching the, uh, the, the presidential address, and, you know, there's Trump not, not shaking the hand of Pelosi, and then Pelosi ripping up his speech. I mean... I don't, I mean, I'm sure people are going to freak out about that for tonight, maybe tomorrow, but you know what? Pfft. It'll be water under the bridge that, you know, there's videos of them too. When Trump came in office in 2017 of like when he's signing papers, his first day of inauguration and he's with all these kids and stuff, there she is and they're joking and all that stuff. So it's like life. So Weird moment, here's Jupiter at 14, 34. So it's like you can almost feel on the horizon. That's why I keep saying there's this weird feeling of something coming because of the fact that Jupiter here is about to go to that 15th degree like I showed you. And at the same time, we are getting ready for Mars at 22. It's getting closer to that south node. That, that bridge of that gap is seven and eight. It's 15 degrees away, all right? But just Mars is only seven degrees away from coming into Capricorn here. So it's like, oh man, I'm here in a week and a half. Uh-oh, I don't want to go there because that south node's there and I have to deal with this kind of loss energy. And that's what the south node deals with. This is, is, a, is a loss. And Mars there is 
really strong and powerful. It was a great loss the last time that happened in 2001, September. So that's kind of the energy that we're in on Tuesday. But as we move on through this week and we go to Wednesday, hmm, now we've got that moon in Cancer. So now we're going to have to deal with the moon in opposite all of the Capricorn stuff, especially as Jupiter's getting ready to come to that 15th degree. Now we do have the Mercury aspect here, which is sextile to Uranus. So this is us still looking forward and also trying to understand that maybe we're better ice skating through an unstable world than controlling a stable world. So, and maybe that we don't need to know how it all works, how it all happens, but somehow it all comes together. And I think that that's so important to remember during these times. Shit is just coming together somehow. No need to go into crazy stress. Venus at 27, it is getting ready to come towards Chiron and it is ready to come into Aries. Not yet though, but Venus also at the same time has made its nice aspects to Saturn and Pluto, but it's done. So Venus is just kind of coming into some weird waters here. And so imagination, projects, relationships, there's a lot of that going on. And that moon in Cancer wants to feel now, especially with Rahu there, but it could be uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable to be comfortable right now for some reason because of control. And I think that this is going to be a good lesson for this the more and more that the moon keeps coming on the north node. And especially the weirdest aspect is being a sun in Aquarius with a moon in Cancer because they are totally not at all. That's what a quincunx is, even though the quincunx isn't exact until we see that on Thursday. But uh, Aquarius is all about when you disconnect. And when you kind of let the emotion go and you just focus on the solution, cancer is, uh, the solution is, I want to feel you. I'm going to sit next to you on your, your deathbed. I'm going to hold your hand. I'm going to kiss you. I'm going to tell you everything's going to be okay. You get to a point in cancer where it's like, I don't care about what the machine says. I don't care about what the doctor says. All I care about is giving you the most feeling that I can to make you feel better. Aquarius is like, well, I'm going to go to the lab and figure out how to figure out the cure, but it has to disconnect from the emotion in order to do that. Because if it's crying the whole time, then it's going to get all over the Petri dish and it's going to be like, oh my God, right? And you're not going to think straight. So, this is a weird week because here we are trying to connect. That's what the sun in Aquarius wants to do is it's bullseye, right? The sun, it wants to connect to people. It wants to find connection, but it wants to feel. And it really is a little uncomfortable in how to do that, especially with that moon that is going to be in opposition to so much of this energy in Capricorn, which is much more controlling and much more like where we block emotion because of control. Now the moon is going to make a good aspect to Mercury. So I think that we can communicate our feelings and our emotions really well on Wednesday and find some interesting situations that are really good. As we move on to Thursday, we do get to with the moon at 13 degrees. So it's going to be in exact opposition to Jupiter. And there's Jupiter at 1455. Last day of being at 14, because that's when it's ready to come to 15 degrees. So let's just, let's just be real here, folks. When you see this chart and you see that number, 1455, that's 15. We're, we're five minutes in geometry away. That is literally just like, did it, did it, like Jupiter is at 15. And so the moon is going to oppose that. But the moon will have the nice trine to Neptune. And the moon will be in quincunx to the sun. Mercury now at four off the, the sextile to Uranus. And so really Mercury's kind of like what to do. Mercury is going to be in uh, aspect to the node soon, but th there is a little bit of a weird play here going on. And it's you having to confront this whole emotional position of where are you restricting from feeling where are you blocking that? Venus, going to be at 28, getting ready to come to 29, the last degrees of Pisces. So that could either be going into the most imaginative place ever and allowing yourself to go with the ultimate surrender. Just things will somehow work out and feel good and, and, and going into what feels magical and feels good. Or people feel hopeless at the last degrees of Pisces. I don't care what planet's there, even if it's exalted or Neptune. The Civil War, remember, happened when Neptune left Pisces and went into Aries, okay? So people felt hopeless at that time, let's be honest. So it doesn't matter if it's Venus, even though Venus loves to be here, but we can focus on what makes us feel good and happy in the imagination of that. And I think that that's going to be so important for us to cultivate in this astrology 
especially Wednesday into Thursday. As we come into Friday, we're getting ready for that full moon. But Friday, it is the moon still in Cancer, so it's going to oppose Saturn and Pluto. So that's more tough. That's much more intense energy. Now we have Venus and Aries. Venus comes in Aries on Friday, and it's getting ready for this full moon. So it's at the zero point of the astrology chart, zero Aries. So it's fired up. She's ready to feel good. She's got Chiron there, so she's like, yeah. Venus is almost like kind of coming. It's like Beauty and the Beast. All right, like this is Belle, Venus, coming into the beast territory, Aries, and trying to heal the beast, get rid of the weird curse that Chiron always thinks it has. So we're all kind of stepping into Beauty and the Beast stories. It doesn't necessarily need to look like a beast, but it just kind of feels like we're all kind of in, like everybody's kind of in a weird space. Belle was in a weird space too, let's be honest. So... There is something to say about relationships, projects, moving in with much more passion, much more intensity, quickness, but also it's to heal something deep that we are feeling some sort of loss in our ego. The sun at 18, not really making any aspects anywhere. Sure, you could look at the semi-square if you count that 45 degrees over and you get to that, that sun, but that, that's already happened. Um... Well, when Venus goes forward. So with Chiron and the sun. The sun, that's a weird angle. The sun's trying to connect to something extremely pass, uh, passionate and, and directional and like, let's take action. But maybe it feels really weird, especially sun in Aquarius, Chiron in Aries, like in a semi-square. That's weird energy. And we've got Lilith on Neptune that day. So we want to escape. And if what feels good to heal us and with the moon that's opposing Saturn and Pluto, like I don't, it, it doesn't want to deal with hard shit, hard work, intensity, and the moon is not void off course. Sure, I mean, we could look at it as it is because it leaves Saturn, but no, it's, it's coming into trines with the sun, the moon, or Venus, or uh, sorry, with the moon and Venus, but Venus will be at 29 that day as it's at 27, like this moon is going to be aspected the whole time. So this is not going to be a Friday of a lot of dull energy. There's going to be a major buildup and it's coming up towards that full moon, which that's what we're going to look at now. Full moon in Leo. It's actually happening on the West Coast Saturday night at 11.33 p.m. But 2.33 a.m. on the East Coast. It's going to happen at 20 degrees of Leo. Okay. And this is where the universe is really asking for us to find happiness and love this weekend, all through Saturday and into Sunday. Because this full moon is coming out of time. Like I said, look at Jupiter, 15 degrees. And I forgot to bring that up in the past charts, but you can just look back. We'll just do it really quick because I have to show you all. But Jupiter comes to 15 on, here it is. There's 1508 and that's on Friday. So we're coming into this full moon at that weird space. There might be even news or weird things in the world that freak people out, make people think that we're at the bottom of the barrel, that there's no hope in the world. And then here comes a full moon in Leo to remind us that it is, that it is worth it, that there is love, that there is joy. And Venus is on Chiron. Venus at one degree. There's Chiron at two. There's Lilith on Neptune. There's Mercury trying the North Node, focusing on that we can connect to God through feeling and not so much about letting go of control of trying to expect expectation of the vision that we want our life to look like, especially Venus on Chiron, especially full moon in Leo is not expecting something to look like it. it. Leo comes into everything. And so does Aquarius. Like, I just feel that this is a good energy and I'm going to bring love and light to it. And I'm going to see what the fuck happens. You know what I mean? And then if it does, fuck yeah, if it doesn't, well, on to the next thing, you know, that's kind of how it works until it fixates and it finds something and then it's like, okay, I love this or I'm excited about it if it's an Aquarius energy. So this is where we're trying to find and fixate on what brings us our inner joy, what brings us our electricity, what brings us out of expectation too. That's going to be weird. Finding joy without expectations, letting go of the control of how it should look. Every relationship and every project and everything I value should look like this. Shouldn't have a scratch on it. Shouldn't have this on it. Well, it's Venus and Chiron. And Aries. It just wants to be, it just wants the beauty and the beast this. It wants Chip to come run out. It wants 
Belle to just save the day, wants the beast to just learn to just chill the fuck out and enjoy that he's got the hottest chick that ever just showed up to walk up into his house. <laughs> like, you know. So I think that there's this huge moment for us to really find and fixate on our true joy and happiness. Also, I just will say that this full moon will make a nice sextile and trine to, to Juno in Libra, which ironically is retrograde, but that is about partnerships and unions. And so there's a lot about relationships and partnerships and unions coming into this weekend and sorting it out and fixating on what is and what isn't and where is it and what is that going to look like while Jupiter's at its weirdest position. So it's almost like we're all kind of in our own bunkers with Uncle Jupe like, it doesn't look good, Uncle Jupe. What do you think? He's like, well, and he pulls out a cigarette and he's like, oh, well, I mean, it's not the end of the world. At least I have my jewel or whatever. Or I have my this or I have my that or I have you. Jupiter's still positive, even at the most bottom of the barrel. Imagine being on a ship and being on that ship and it was stormy as hell and it was just the middle of the ocean. It was just horrible. Where would you, who would you want to go hang out with? Would you want to go hang out with Saturn or Pluto? Pluto would be like, oh, I just don't want to, right? Like Pluto would just be like, we're going to die, <laughs> right? Saturn would be like, I just got, I got to control the, the damn ship, right? The Aquarius energy would be like, oh, um, I don't know. I'll figure it out. I got to go up on the helm and I got to go figure it out somehow. Mercury's like, I don't know. I mean, who knows? It just go with the flow. Chiron and Venus are just like, well, I mean, it doesn't look good at all. So, I mean, I mean, we'll try everything we can to feel good. Maybe it's a little moment like on the Titanic. Like, let's go into the freaking Model T Ford and fucking throw up a hand on some fucking window. I mean, you might want to go hang out with them. They're not too bad to hang out with, I guess. But Uncle Jupe at 15, even when it's at its worst, is still going to be like, well, hey, crack a joke. Hey, th if this is the worst, we're still here, right? We're still here. Mars at 25 is within a degree and a half, although for most of us that were born prior to 2012-ish and so forth, 26 is the galactic center or 27 is the technical degree. So we're coming into the space of faded alignments in our identity and quest to take. The moon in Leo is going to try in that Mars. So this Sunday, we get a lot of momentum of direction from whatever that we're starting to fixate. We might not understand what to fixate on, but we might get a clue. We might get close. Mercury's is in shadow. But it is try that north node. And you also need to remember as well that Venus is exactly on Chiron on Sunday. So this emotional world, this to feel better world, this taking action and sitting into positive energy is so crucial this weekend. Because Monday, we drop into reality. Monday, we drop into, there, there's that moon in Virgo. And it's going to oppose Mercury, which is not at the best position, right? It's in its fall. And it is in square to Antares, which is at 9 and 10. Well, it's at 10 now. 10, Sag, and then and Aldebaran, which is at 10, Gemini. Okay? So, those oppositions are the Palladian, there's this light bearing energy, and then there's this big red giant energy, and there's this opposition between we're in a reality that's emotionally intense, it's also a time where Mercury is trying to figure it out, but it doesn't know how to understand, it's just like, go with the flow, emotions in Virgo, go with the flow of the reality that doesn't feel like we, we if we don't have something that we at least want to fixate on, or that we're happy about, or that we came into joy with, this reality is going to just be tough. And it's just going to be confusing. And the sun's at 21 degrees, like, I don't know what to do. I mean, I don't have any really aspects to anything. Really, it doesn't. Sure, it's semi-quadrant to the North Node. So it's like, I have no idea what, where, where the emotion lies. That's why you got to bring in something to this. And Jupiter's what? 1545, still at the worst degree for Jupiter. Now look at Saturn, 26. Now we're starting to come into shadow territory because remember Saturn's going to come up to one degree of Aquarius and then retrograde back to that 26 degree. All right? So we're moving forward 
but it's not an easy time. And Mars is at 2606. Now it's really at that galactic center, but there it is heading towards that south node. So it's funny that we're seeing the closing in of Mars in the south node. And that closing in is happening on the galactic center. All right, so we might feel like we are lost in the galaxy. We might feel like there's no way for us to get through this galaxy. There's no way. We're waiting for Buzz Lightyear to show up. But I think that the, I, the, uh, the understanding of Buzz Lightyear is that you've got to find Buzz Lightyear in yourself, which is what Buzz, Light, Buzz Lightyear teaches to Woody. It's what he teaches to everybody around in Toy Story. Okay, because he's actually flawed. And so you got to find the Buzz Lightyear and you got to go fly and you got to bring that da, 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 into this and fly and to infinity and beyond or continue to deal with reality and letting the world and the way and the fear and the disbelief and feeling like you're at the bottom of the barrel of things and not accepting anything that'll make you feel better. There's a lot of that shit going on and it's time to stop that. Thank you so much for being a part of High Vibe. Thank you so much for being a part of Deep Astrology. I hope that you all have a great full moon. I love you all so much. Sending you the best energy through this right now. Make sure you share this video to get it out to people. Thanks so much. We got, we got Last Deep Astrology was popping. I think we got like almost 80,000 views. So thanks so much for getting this video out, sharing it to your friends, family. We love you all. Join highvibe.tv today to get all the exclusive content. And you can see the charts, how we did all this and much more. 20% discount code right now, Deep Love. Check it out. I'll be putting it up here for a while to get some people onboarded. Thank you so much. And we'll see you on the next uh, Deep Astrology.